Hi friends, and welcome to Judson Sunday Arts, where kids of all ages can make art that matters. My name's Lulu, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and if you're joining us with low vision, I'm a white 34-year-old woman with very short, dirty blonde hair. I'm wearing a nude uh, lace top with a black and burgundy sweater, and there's a bookcase behind me, two doors, and some art on the walls. Today we're going to be making photo essays on the topic of love. You will need a camera to take photographs with. It can be a part of a phone or tablet, a digital camera, or one that uses film. If you don't have access to any of these, you can draw pictures, use photographs that you already have, or photos from a magazine. Oh yeah, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> on this day, we celebrate romantic love but we can really celebrate all kinds of love. And at Judson, we believe that love is love and we celebrate love no matter who you are or who you love. But we also know that there are still a lot of people in the world that are prejudiced. Luckily, activists and regular people have fought and are still fighting to make sure that there are laws in the United States and all over the world that protect and uphold love between people that are the same gender or different races. Today we're going to watch a video from the ACLU about the Lovings, a black woman named Mildred Jeter who married a white man, Richard Loving, when interracial marriage was still illegal in many states. They were able to fight this unfair law and make a difference in all of our lives. In June of 1963, Mildred Loving wrote to the ACLU expressing her desire to be able to visit her family with her husband. The problem was that he was white and she was black. At the time, Virginia was one of 16 states with anti-miscegenation laws on its books. She wrote to the Justice Department and she was told to write to the ACLU. She said, we know we can't live there, but we'd like to go back once in a while and visit our families and friends. And in 1967, four years later, the Supreme Court unanimously struck down all state bans on interracial marriage. Almost 50 years later, the Loving decision paved the way for marriage equality among same-sex couples. In 2015, the Supreme Court referenced the Loving decision when it guaranteed the right for LGBT couples to marry. But neither the Loving decision nor the Civil Rights Movement ended the deeply entrenched discrimination that we still see today and against which we fight today. Well, it's always important, whether it's loving or any other form of discrimination. If you don't stop the majority from oppressing the minority, they will take over and oppress the minority. While we've come a long way, the loving story is a chilling reminder that we must remain vigilant. Those hard-won fights for equality cannot be taken for granted, nor do they happen automatically. Today, in proposals by the incoming Trump administration, as well as in laws and policies being proposed in states across the nation, we find that our basic civil rights that are protected in the Constitution are at risk. The Lovings were asleep in their home when they were first arrested. Discrimination would even go into their bedrooms and their private homes. And what the Lovings taught us is to never underestimate the power of standing up for what you believe in, and that the power of love and of justice will prevail. We have to celebrate the Loving story the story of two people who loved each other and were committed to each other, wanted to make sure that their country recognized their rights, and also to the struggle for making sure that those rights would be protected. Did you learn anything new from that video clip? What did you notice about the pictures that were included? What stood out to me was the love I saw in the old photographs of the Lovings when they were pictured as a couple and when they were together as a family with their children. I did a little more searching and found that there was a photographic essay about the Lovings featured in Life magazine. The photographs were shot by photojournalist Gray Villay. I hope I said his name right. Let's take a look at more of his photographs and see what you notice.
what did you notice? Does this series of photographs look like a love story to you? Sure, it doesn't look like a fairy tale cliche, but that's not what most love looks like. I see love in the way that the photographs show the family simply being together and caring for each other. How would you tell a love story with photographs? You guessed it. Now it's art making time. Today, we're going to make photographic essays that tell a love story. Think about the theme, love. Decide who will be the subjects of your love story. Will it be people, pets, or toys that you love? How many different photographs will you need to take to tell your story? Start shooting. Take as many photographs as you need because one of the hard parts will be editing them. Editing can look like editing the actual photograph by cropping it or adding a filter, but it also means looking at the photographs and deciding which photographs you must use in order to tell your story and which ones can just be left out. When you're done, give your love story photo essay a title and give your individual photographs descriptions that help tell the story. You could spend five minutes or a whole week making your love story photo essay. If you love what you made, send it to me so I can feature it in another edition of Judson Sunday Arts. Be safe, wear your masks, happy Valentine's Day, happy photo taking, and happy Black History Month, friends. See ya.